Hi, my name is uh, Thomas Olson. I'm going to present a study of the scoping of quality requirements. We want to understand the life cycle perspective of scoping of quality requirements, at what point in time they are introduced and how they are handled. In this study, we want to understand the scope decisions that are made for the entire life cycle for a software platform. We studied all the decisions taken for all requirements over a period of five years. In this period, the company released 41 products, 36 different software releases, and 10 different chipsets. During this period, there was taking decisions for 4,446 requirements. Of the requirements, 196 were explicit quality requirements. For example, startup time or usability. What we see in the build-up phase and in the growth phase is that there are not that many quality requirements coming into the scope decision process. This is mainly because there was a focus to get new products onto the market and get new features onto the market. About halfway through, we entered the new market phase and then later on the consolidation phase. In these phases, the number of quality requirements increased to uh, around 6%. And the reason is really that it was coming into new markets, which meant new requirements, but also hardware changes and form factor changes led to new requirements on the product and specifically performance being much worse than it was previously. We see that we have two sources of requirements essentially. The external sources was essentially sales channels which drove requirements towards the company. They do not necessarily represent the end user. In the first half of the life cycle, the number of requirements coming from external sources and internal sources are about the same. We see in the second half of the life cycle, the number of quality features coming from internal sources increases quite much. And this again emphasizes the shifts of the focus from new markets to customer satisfaction. So we see the increase in internally in the number of features that are trying to improve the quality. Despite there were many warning signs that the quality was degrading, it took a long time for the company actually to address the quality problems. The users were unhappy, the performance was going down, but the cycle to get that into the roadmap was very long. The other problem was that it took a long time for the organization to change and align and work towards a common goal of improving the performance. There was a reliance on fewer stakeholders in the beginning of the life cycle. That did backfire in the sense that the company focused very much on fewer stakeholders and did not take into account the width of the number of potential stakeholders. There is a need to understand the actual user of your products. It's not good enough to rely on fewer stakeholders and expect that they are giving you a representative picture of what the end users actually need. We also need to think much more about working data-driven, specifically since even if you never think about them, you will still end up with some kind of quality level. So thank you for listening to this video. I hope you enjoy it.